What's going on my exotic family? Welcome back to another video. Um, so today's video, I'm actually gonna go ahead and do a Q&A and answer some questions that you guys got for me. Stay tuned. All right, everybody, so welcome back. Um, like I said, I was gonna go ahead and answer some questions that you guys uh, asked me. Um, so I put out a question on uh, Instagram on my story, um, and I asked you guys basically if you had any questions and I would answer them um, on YouTube. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into it with the first question. Um, first question is, what is your favorite ball python gene? Hmm. So me, um, I'm not really a huge ball python fan. I do have one. Um, I'm not really super into the morphs. Um, there's so many, um, but one of my favorites, uh, my all-time favorites would have, have to be uh, the clown gene. Um, I just really like the pattern and how it looks. Um, so I'd definitely have to say uh, the, the clown gene, most definitely. All right, so the next question is, how many snakes do you have total? Um, so currently in my reptile room, I have a total of 10 snakes. Um, there are three boas, two colubrids, and five pythons. So currently 10. Um, hopefully there will be more in the future, but uh, we'll see right now. I'm just sitting at a hard 10, and as we're gonna keep it out, keep it at for now. Um, but like I said, that more than likely will change. This is a good one. It says, um, "How long does it take to maintenance my snake room?" Um, so. There's 10 snakes um, of all different sizes. Um, so it really just kind of depends on the maintenance that I'm doing and if I'm spot cleaning, that can take me, excuse me, that can take me anywhere from, you know, 45 minutes upwards to an hour. Um, if I'm doing full bedding changes, as uh, you guys saw I was doing the other day on Instagram, um, that's more than likely like an all day project because I like to take the cages apart. I usually soak the snakes in a bin. Um, I'll get in there real good with some, um, some bleached water and some F10 solution and I'll scrub everything real good. Um, for my, some of my older cages, I'll um, uh, make sure everything is still sealed properly. Um, and then I go ahead and uh, put the new bedding and everything, everything in there. So that's usually an all day project. Um, I don't know if you can see in the video, I still have stuff everywhere in my reptile room um, because like I said, it's an all day project. However, I did not get all of my cages done. Um, actually stay tuned because I'm actually gonna do a video on some bedding changes for you guys. So uh, be on the lookout for that coming up maybe sometime at the end of this week. Um, so, um, but yeah, if I'm doing just spot cleanings, it can take anywhere from 45 minutes to like an hour. Um, but if I'm doing deep, you know, cleaning some elbow grease in there, it's an all day project. Uh, that'll take a while. Okay. Next question. Uh, would I own an iguana? Um, so I actually have owned an iguana. Um, and to be honest, an iguana was my first lizard, um, which is kind of why I'm so passionate about the uh, education of reptiles um, because I was uneducated about this particular animal and I took it home uh, without knowing, um, you know, what it grew, what it would grow into, the proper requirements, the temperaments and everything of that nature. Um, obviously I did it, you know, as I learned to care for the animal, um, but um, would I own another one? Definitely not. Um, for me, they just get entirely too big. I had a green iguana, um, and then you know, as they get bigger, my male grew to be you know a beast, and they can be uh, hard to deal with. They're not bad animals, um, however, they do require quite a bit of attention. Um, and you know, with a baby, that that's not something that I feel like I can handle, especially not in an apartment. So, um, would I ever get one? Even if I had a house, probably not. They're great animals, um, just not for me. So is there a snake, well the question is, is there a snake that I would not own again? Um, and I'm gonna say to that question, no, um, but I'm gonna kinda revamp it and is there a snake that I would never own? And I'm gonna say yes, um, and that's gonna be um, anything that is extremely venomous. Um, like I mentioned before, I have a baby. Um, but even then, if, even if I didn't have a baby, I just don't feel like that's for me. Beautiful animals, um, I like looking at them. Um, I've held a few. But actually keeping one in my home, 
no definitely not i, I have had a scorpion um it's mild venom nothing too dangerous but an actual venomous snake um or you know something that can kill you in minutes can't do it <laughs> can't do it mm -mm. this is a good one um so one of you guys on instagram asked uh what do i do to unwind um and and oof, I don't know. I don't, to answer that question, um, to be honest, it's being in my reptile room or um, watching TV or editing videos for YouTube. Um, that's pretty much it. I, I do work a lot um, when I come home. Um, you know, work doesn't stop. Um, I gotta come in here or, you know, with the baby being so young, um, gotta make sure that's taken care of first, obviously. Um, and then everything comes after. But for the most part, it's usually watch TV, reptile room, or sleep. That's that's probably it for me. I don't get to hang out a whole lot. Um, my job is kind of time consuming, so I usually work on the weekends here and there as well. Um, so even when I get off, all I want to do is sleep. Um, that rarely happens though. So ah, um, me relaxing, not, not very often. <laughs> That's another good question. Um, how did I find my love for reptiles? Um, I actually did a video early on when I started my channel sometime last year um, that explained like why I got into reptiles. Um, but I'll go ahead, you know, get into that again. Basically, um, that spark, I guess you can call it, has always been there. Um, you know, me and my brother used to play outside and we used to catch all types of critters and, and things like that. And it always interested me and fascinated me to see, you know, what other creatures and animals that we had out there and, and just try to, I guess, investigate them to see what exactly they were, you know, how they live, what they were about, like what their purpose was, I guess, in, in a sense. Um, and then from there, I did go on, um, as I got older to work in a pet store and I kind of gained more knowledge um, that kind of wanted, that kind of helped me pursue um, more education um, because although it was a great pet store, I just don't think that it had all of the knowledge and all of the information. I mean, even now, um, I still don't have it, but um, I know far a lot more than I did before. Um, but I definitely, um, definitely think, um, you know, my younger years being outside and catching things and observing and always being fascinated by other animals and things of that nature kind of is what sparked it for me. I mean, it kind of just stuck. Um, so that's that's how I got started um, I got my first reptile when I was I want to say like 14 13 14 which was the iguana uh, which was a horrible idea a horrible idea how much do I spend on rats so the question was how much do I spend on rats per feeding um, but if you guys know me you guys know I don't do frozen so I don't really I can't calculate it by feeding. I mean, I could, but I'm not. Um, but I basically buy all of my uh, rats in bulk. Um, so it's pretty cheap um, for the most part. So you look in my, well, yeah, my freezer is, is stocked up right now. Um, but I think last time I came home with like maybe like 180 rats um, in mice. Um, and I think I probably spent like, maybe like ooh, 105 bucks. Um, so, I mean, it's not bad, but I mean, that lasts me months. Um, you know, Luther only eats once a month. Um, you know, the Blood Python, Kato, and the Carpet Python, Khalifa, they're only eating twice a week. Or twice a month, I'm sorry. They eat every other week, every two weeks. Um, and everyone else is weekly. So, um, I don't really have to buy a lot. Um, and even if I'm getting low, if I got like two more weeks supply left for everybody, then I know I need to uh, contact my uh, supplier and then I go ahead and stock up. Um, but it's not really expensive at all. I, get, I mean, it depends on where you live at, the availability, what you're feeding, how often you're feeding, I guess. Um, but for me, it's not that bad. Like I said, I came home with like 180 uh, mice and rats um, and I probably spent like 105 bucks, which for me is not bad at all. I mean, you can go to a pet store and spend that on like 16 rats and you're done. <laughs> so. All right, so how often do I do um, bedding changes? Um, so me, I'm very adamant about my enclosures, not even just my snakes, but all of my reptiles, the tortoise, the tarantula, 
um, the leopard gecko, the bearded dragon. I'm adamant about keeping all of my animals clean. The cleaner you keep them, the healthier they'll be. Um, so um, depending on the animal, um, I'll use you know my snakes. Um, a spot clean daily. Um, as far as deep actual cleanings, where I pull that bedding out and then I bleach it down um, and then I wipe it down, I do that monthly. Um, only because I just wanna make sure that the cleanliness is maximized. I don't have any issues. Um, you got you can have you know the freshest cleanest bedding um, but you know the animals poop they go to the bathroom and that's just uh, my peace of mind making sure that my, my enclosures are clean that's how I've always done it and when I say bleach I don't mean full-on bleach it's obviously diluted with water so let me just throw that in there I don't want nobody thinking I just pour bleach in there not the case uh, bleach water is what I use um, and that's what I use to clean my enclosures I wipe them down I actually posted a um, Kind of like a time lapse of uh, me cleaning some of the tubs in the rack right here. I actually post that so you guys can look at it really quick. Um, but um, I wipe them down, put the bedding in there, put them back in there. Um, so, like I said, I spot clean daily um, as far as full bedding changes once a month. Okay, so the last question is Has the baby? met the beardy and the answer to that question is no um baby is literally two months old um she's been in the room she's observed the animals however i am not yet comfortable actually letting her touch or feel the animals um i feel like that's a little too soon for me um my personal rule is i want her to actually um be old enough so i won't actually let her interact with any of the animals or let her see the animals until she's at least one or two years old because she can actually comprehend, um, you know, it's something different and she can investigate it versus she's a baby, she can't set up straight yet. I don't want any animals on her or around her. She can look, um, just, you know, just to kind of get her to recognize some new colors and things like that. But um, nope, she's met nobody yet. Um, and even then when we come in the room, she comes like two feet in the room and, you know, she looks at the dog, but other than that, no ma'am, no sir, no ma'am, no ham. Um, so, 10 questions. Um, posted the questions, uh, posted the uh, question on um, Instagram. Um, I gave you guys 10 answers. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to ask me any other questions, guys. I actually enjoy doing stuff like this, uh, being more ad interactive with you guys. So, please, please keep those questions coming. Um, make sure you guys follow, make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell. Um, tell a friend to tell a friend. And as always, stay exotic.